<laughs> Thanks, Steve. Hi, and welcome to the IBD and Ostomy Support Show. Sorry if you just listened to Steve. I, I am in, I'm in charge of today. Um, unfortunately, Louise is feeling quite poorly and has got really bad tooth pain, so isn't able to join us. Um, Steffi has lost her voice. And Natalie's doing an assignment. So we have the lovely Graham joining us because we wouldn't we wouldn't want it to be just me and Steve because it would be really, really boring. So luckily, Graham, last minute, came in. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Hannah, I think it's you that put that rule in, love. Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> so tonight on the, on the show, we are talking about um, base, base plate extenders. I can't say that. Base plate extenders. How to use them. How to stop uh, pancaking. Talking about gelling agents and leaks and how to deal with an emergency leak so if you've got any questions you can ping us through on the um the live chat and i'll be manning that tonight um and we'll try and answer them all for you all right so what have i been up to this week so i have um i came out of hospital friday so last week was really hard <laughs> poor steve had a very grumpy yeah, week. poor me <laughs> had a very, That's good very yeah had a very grumpy Rachel and I was struggling with the pain relief and I think I wasn't I wasn't very nice so you know I've apologized and I, I just I struggle with the admissions I think I realized that it it hits I suddenly realized that I am ill and I think maybe need to slow down and and there's there's lots of things that it taps on but I'm, I'm glad to be out I've got a possible plan for my diversion colitis so I may be going to um have that sorted by my surgeon. I have to have another flexi and he will seriously consider it, but he's not said it's a yes, he's not said it's a no. So it's maybe, which is better than when we first started the conversation, it was a no. So mm -hmm. that's something that's a positive because I've been getting a lot of side effects from that with the bleeding, losing weight and things like that. So hopefully that'll help. And what else have I done this week? I've I've um, went to an interview for Macmillan um, cancer advocacy and I've got the role so it's a voluntary role and um, so that I get training in two weeks and that's an instant instant aspect because I used to do radiotherapy so it's nice to kind of touch back on that side of things and I'm seeing Steve tomorrow I haven't seen him for Yay. a while so I'm getting a train up to he was going to come down but I, I put my foot down and I'm going to get the train up and then I got a meeting with Codaplast on Monday in Peterborough. Well, on Tuesday, actually, but I'm going up Monday in Peterborough. So that'd be really interesting. And I'm looking forward to that. So just busy, busy. I am trying to slow down. Yeah. I really, really <laughs> am. I, no, the, I am. I, <laughs> wow. You should see her when she's being busy. <laughs> is oh, this been not busy, is this? Oh, I'll tell you what, mate. Uh, <laughs> Rachel's <laughs> trying, yeah, is completely different to other humans trying. But you know, what do you mean? You, you are, you're very, you are a very busy girl. I know. I, 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 I can't. I think because I live on my own and I don't have just, commitment to children. That, you keep saying that, but it's not. I, it's because you love it. That's what it is. Yeah, I do love it, but I think it keeps me busy as well. And yeah, so maybe I do need to slow that down a bit. But um, yes, yeah, so that's me. So I'll hand you over to Steve. Hello, it's me, uh, Steve, hashtag bag daddy. Um, my week has been rather, it's been kind of just a, a normal boring week. I've been collecting sponsorship money, um, working. I, I, I went to a concert yesterday. Was it yesterday? The day before with my lad and for four hours of standing up. I didn't like the music. Wow. Who was but it? Being, but, it, uh, as it is, it's I don't know some some pop internet. <laughs> I don't know. It, was, it wasn't my sort of thing. You get, you know, it's like it's live music in it. But when you've got to stand there for four hours and still, I did my dad bit and uh, my lad loved it. Um, what else have I been doing? I've had quite a few emails from Denmark. Um, a few more things in the planning for Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's, it's going to be a very exciting co uh, couple of months for, for me, mate. The next few months are so. Uh, it's, very busy. It's all, yep, the uh, colour plasters 
uh, uh, they're basically giving the go-ahead to, to talk about the bag. You know, obviously, mm. it's out there now. It's not available until the 1st of April, but you can you can get your um, your orders in for samples. It's an absolutely amazing bag. I can't wait to advocate it. When does it go on prescription, do you know? I think it's the 1st of April. 1st of April, Oh, yeah. so you can get samples and prescriptions. Yeah, so. yeah. And I, I suggest anyone with a hernia or with an outward body shape. Uh-huh. Rachel, yeah, any- Rachel doesn't like that that term. I uh, we, we had such a laugh. I was talking to a a gentleman yesterday, one of the managers, and I told him Rachel, and he, we we had a laugh. We did laugh. Because <laughs> they, they they call it an outward body shape, which actually now I think is, is quite is gentler than a hernia. But when I first heard that, and Steve said that to me, I went, I don't have an outward body shape. <laughs> you, See, what thing, do you mean? And the thing I is, took offense. They're covering, covering all the angles because you haven't necessarily got to have a, a hernia. Mm. It's for people right. who might have quite a Six. large t- tummy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it goes. You could fit it on a bowling ball. Ash, you could actually Ash, probably fit it on a tennis ball. To be fair, Ash, Ash has just asked what bag we're talking about. We're talking about the new bag that hasn't launched yet. Well, it's, it's called, the concave Mio, or the Mio concave. It's designed for hernias and it's star shaped. Um, and it, you can you can get it on on you can get your samples from the first of April. So if you've got any dips, if you if you've got any dips on either side, or you have a hernia, or you feel like your bag doesn't fit around that area very well, then it's worth having a go. It's brilliant. It is. I was suffering quite a lot of. I, I built brilliant with the bag that I was on previous for for months and months, and then my hernia grew. Um, I was getting leaks. I was getting like channels where where output was coming down and they were peeling away and then this bag came just at the right time for me i trialed Mm. it and and i have a look back to be fair so uh, i suggest everyone who's got an outward body shape or a hernia Mm. to give it a go you know what i mean and i use it i use it with a barrier ring because i need a slight convex with mine and i use it with a barrier ring that works quite well so it's definitely definitely worth worth getting a sample and trying it over that down and that's pretty much been my my um week it's been busy but not not sort of anything untoward really uh and introduced to the lovely graham thank what you been up to mate um i've had a fairly quiet week this week um tuesday i had my usual appointment with the district nurse for me bladder washout have that once a week um didn't tell them that I had a recovering from a UTI because if they find out that they'll not do it. So uh, broke a bit of news there. <laughs> but that was authorised by my GP to say nothing. Um, Wednesday, I had a quiet day in. Today, I've been to the hospital to see my respiratory team because uh, I've got uh, restricted airways because of scoliosis. And the start is on two different um, inhalers to try just to try and make me breathing a little bit more easier and I've, I've got this terrible cough that I just cannot shake so hopefully it's just going to open up the airways and make things easy, easier for us and then I got a last minute call to come on here Thank Yay. you so much, we are really so, really grateful so we love quite, having you on I'm quite happy to help you out so, but no, for me this, this has been a quiet week but I'll, I'll make up for it next week. <laughs> so, so what we're we talking about today then? Well, before we ask, we've just got, so Richard, Richard says, I love his picture, it's brilliant. Says, how is the arm bag, bag Daddy? If the arm is um, fantastic. My hip, my bruise has just went wow. completely. It's moved down to my wrist. So my wrist is really hurt. It's, it's mad. In a minute, really? I'll, I'll have bru- yeah, it's moved right down there. That's I'll weird. Bruised fingers tomorrow, probably. Really? Yeah, it's strange, but uh, it's healed really well. I'm what glad about that, your you nose? Know, my nose, nose is, it, it's, it's fixed. It's broken, still broken, but uh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm able to breathe. The swelling's gone down a bit. Mm-hmm. So I'm still still looking just as handsome as of I was course. before. It doesn't say nothing, really, does it? <laughs> uh, Dude, it's, it's on straw, actually, because when... Just as Steve was doing his match, I was getting seen seen by the outpatient GP. So I actually missed the <coughs> match live. 
Oh, so it was just oh. so, but I think it worked out well because I wasn't. I knew I wasn't well, and the snow yeah. was unable to travel. So in a way, it kind of was meant to be. I was well, meant to I, it wasn't until after my fight when I got changed and I come out, and then Raj told me that uh, Rachel had, had been admitted. Yeah, I didn't was... want you to find out before Steve because I didn't want it to affect your match. Yeah, I know it, it didn't. Which is which is nice. Yeah, but, you know, it was kind of like wow. I didn't. You know, it was kind of a bit of a shock, really. Yeah. Although you hadn't been that well anyway, had you, Rach? No, I was bad for the three days before. I just yeah, tried yeah. to put it off going oh. in. Right. So tonight we are talking about base base play extenders, and I can't <laughs> find mine. So what? What, what base play extenders do you all try? Right, right then. What works and what hasn't worked? I've got the Bravo. Have we all got the Bravo? Yeah, yes. I've got the Bravo. And but you know what? I don't use anything anymore. Do you I know? always I always use these with every bag that I've had, every single one of them. Uh -huh. uh, there's I have no need to because I've no like I said to you earlier, I've never had a leak mm -hmm. with this bag, so. I can't, it's kind of, you know, defeats putting them on. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I've so got yes. numerous, new, I've got numerous ones in my cupboard, you know, um, samples, but I found the Bravo is kind of like, um, I don't know, it sticks really nice when I was using my previous bags. So mm -hmm. I used, I used it with the, even with the, uh, the Sensor and Mio's, mm -hmm. the flat ones. And, and it, it does the job, doesn't it? Especially if you're going to go swimming or doing something like that. Gives that extra bit of safety. How about yeah. you, Graham? Do you use I've Bravo? used these Bravas for about, well, since they came out two or three years ago. But before that, um, obviously I used things before any of these came out. Mm -hmm. And I used the Microport tape. Right. And you couldn't get that on prescription. Really? So for years. I had to keep going to my store nurse and keep asking her for a supply. And I used that for about 15 years. And so was got... that was that when you first had your stoma? So... No, this was in the mid-90s. Right, okay. And I've had my stoma since 80, 81. Right. So we're using this micropause for, for years. And as soon as you get hot, it just slides off. Mm. I, it's funny actually because I have when I did I did an article in the UA magazine and they and a, a guy a guy got in touch with me who lived in Bournemouth and who had a me so I met up with him and he's really lovely and and he showed me his stoma and he just had micropore everywhere and his skin was red raw and I was like oh my gosh so I just gave him my base plate extenders and I said try these if you like them then yeah. order them because I the, his his poor skin was just bright red but he didn't he didn't know what to use and i think when people don't know how to use the internet it's hard to get the information it is. knowledge is key isn't it uh, yeah it's hard for them to get the information that there is you don't have to use that he was just using so actually i think it was sellotape he was using I and um that. i just i just had to give him my i gave him i think three boxes i had three boxes and i gave him the three boxes and i said if you need any more just ask it on prescription mm -hmm. so yeah. i use i use these i think they're brilliant bravo base plate extenders. I've also used the Clinimed Manuka Honey, and I thought they were fab. Mm -hmm. Pelicans have been great. Um, I think I've kind of used these and stuck to them. I didn't get on with, I'm not sure if it was Trio, or it was I've one which is really yeah, thin. I yeah, I didn't like them at all. No, I, it came off. They stuck to my T-shirt, they did. Really? When I, when, yeah, when I've used them, I've took my T-shirt off, and it's all sort of peeled off, and I got in the right mess. Mm -hmm. Well, Val says that she uses Trio, so, you know, they obviously work for, and I think Natalie now uses Trio, because Natalie used Brava for years, and then mm -hmm. her skin started to react to it, and that, unfortunately, that has been quite common with these products, <coughs> that suddenly some skins have kind of then become, had reactions to them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I know Natalie did, a, there's a really good post that she did about all the different type of of base plate extenders and actually tried all different ones. So I think if, if you are getting a bit sore around the skin, try, look around, you know, try Top for and change. Else. That's definitely that is. I mean, I remember trying uh, Coloplast 
one of my sort of probably like the second bag that I tried mm-hmm. and my skin reacted to everything all, all really? the bags or yeah I, it, it was just stayed red raw and so I kind of like decided right they're not for me they're not for me mm-hmm. in the end found pelican and stayed with them for I don't know probably probably like about a year I reckon probably a little bit more mm-hmm. and then and then I started, they, my, my stomach started getting affected again. I was getting leaks. The hernia had happened. And so try, I just thought I'll try I'll try different ones again. And then I tried Coloplast again, mm-hmm. the Mio's. And, and my skin didn't affect at all. So I think your, your skin type can change over the years. It, it must. It, it must that, do. Because I, I used to imagine. wear dance sack bags for years. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, my skin started to go red. Yeah. And then I changed to Coloplast. And I never had any problems. Really? I'm wondering if I've tried Danstack. I used Danstack for about it. ten years. Danstack Nova Life is they they yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Shell uses Danstack. Uh huh. And and Steffi used to use Danstack. Mm-hmm. I think she's using Peak Medical. I don't know. Um, but Val's put um that's why why she changed because she became allergic and alter, alternate things. Mm-hmm. Um, Ash said, have you heard about the new barrier from Independence? I'm not sure about no, that. I haven't heard that one. No, I haven't In- heard that. Independence, is that an actual um, a make? I think so. I've not heard of them, to be honest. No, no, mate. I'll have to have a look at that. But Ash also said about Oakmed bag destroyed destroyed his skin. I know that Oakmed, eurostomies seem to be really... Um, your ostomates seem to really like the Oakmed micro skin bag, which I haven't actually seen many people with ileostomies or colostomies talk about Oakmed. But for your ostomies, a lot of people like the micro skin. Mm-hmm. They seem to work quite well. And also the, the convex Oakmed. But regarding the other bags, I've not really heard much about Oakmed. Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't think I know anyone that's used them. No, no, mate. But going, going back to the side strips. I've read people that have used duct tape in the past. <laughs> it's it's laughable, really. But you know, you use whatever whatever is going to work. When you you try anything, mm-hmm. if if you're struggling. Well, if you don't if you don't know they're available, you don't know it's an option. No. I, you use whatever's to hand, isn't it? And that's right. But I mean, you could you could continue putting it on until you've covered your whole tummy and chest, couldn't you? You could. If 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 it's getting underneath your uh, your bag then it's just going to continue until you actually, you're just going to take your whole body. You would, you would. You know what I mean? But to get it off must be a nightmare. Lots of adhesive remover. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I actually think that, because a lot of the years that I don't remember when things were really bad for me and I don't really remember much of when I first had my stoma, but I think if mum was watching, she might comment because I think I I had leaks and I think I used sellotape and micropore or think I didn't realise that there were any like any extenders available and it wasn't until I actually entered the stoma community online did I realise what was going on and it, it helped me in so many ways and I think it sometimes I get letters through the post I don't know if you have um, from Clinimed and they have like an example like they have just one or two examples in there yeah, and I think yeah that's a really really good idea because it allows people that doesn't have access to, access to internet to know about the extenders that's right yeah but but i often, I often wonder how do the how do these uh, people who send the samples out get your name and address Should, i think it's know, previous samples that you signed up to before i'm sure it is that's what i mean but if you if you're signing up for samples online then they've got your address it, for someone that doesn't actually uh use the internet how are they going to initially get signed up do you know what i mean that's right yeah that's true I mean, the internet's massive when it comes to, to to this world of ibd and and ostomies mm-hmm. do you know what i mean but i In think you've, you've got things like the you've got tidings the colostomy uk um book you've got the ia journal you've got um sorry the tidings journal you've got ia journal you've got ua journal that does that is available for people that it won't cover everybody that doesn't have access to internet, but it is like a not a manual way. What do you say? Like a I know, you, I know exactly like what a you're paper, to say. a paper yeah. copy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Of information. I mean, it, it, it's something that you 
I think the stoma nurses really need to push because the knowledge is power. You know, once you're once you're suffering with something, what what do we do? We just put up with it until you know any different. But I, but I also think that it's more. It's also osteomates knowing that they can go to the stoma nurses if there's tr troubling. A lot of people I've spoken to in hospital and who seem to be older don't like bugging the stoma nurse if they have leaks and just put up with it. And it's almost like educating them to ask the stone nurses right. to see what what is available i think it's it's that stage they need some help i think that's really sad you know yeah because i mean my, my stone nurses are fantastic they can't do enough to help you they really Mine's couldn't the and you know and you tell them some they, they just they just can't wait to learn new stuff mm -hmm. you know what i mean because everyone's learning but ultimately they haven't got stomas have they they've treated thousands mm. that's right but my but stoma nurse Sorry, Steve. No, no, carry on. My stoma nurse, I've known her since she was a student nurse. Wow. Then she looked after us as a staff nurse. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And then she became a stoma nurse and took on me in 1993. And I wow. still see her every month. That's is a rapport. Yeah, it, it is, is, isn't it? That, you know, that's I a have rapport. a really good relationship with her. And she not, she's not just there for my stoma, but she's there for everything. Yeah, an interest yeah. In everything that's wrong with us. Have a good old chin wag. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. That's right, then. right. So right. the next item on the agenda is gelling agents. Oh. Things to things to thicken up your output. Guinness. So, <laughs> Guinness. The Guinness is good, but it darkens it as well. It certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> right. Over this last week, over this last week, I've tried uh, a couple of samples that I, that I picked up. Are you going to tell me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you remember last week, didn't you? You was on last week. Who who asked me to do it now? Was it, I wasn't was it on you? last week. I wasn't. I was no, in you hospital. wasn't, was you? Of course. Sorry. No. Did you, watch, you watched a bit of it, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't watch all of it. Well, I think as Louise said, ask me um, if I would try a few. Okay. Obviously, if, if my output was because it was quite liquidy this week, and so I've I've tried the uh, the diamonds. How did you get on? Um, I didn't like them. I, I tried the diamonds and I tried the pearls as well. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, they're two different brands, which I thought is quite clever. That um, the pearls is trio, and the diamonds is Convertech. I like the way they both, um, you know, use the opposite scales, the diamonds and pearls. I found that they were both pretty good, to be honest. They did the job. If, if anything, they made made it too thick. Really? Yeah, I, I kind of like, to be honest with me, I don't mind if it's liquid because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's out of your bag faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that really does, it doesn't worry me because I'm not, like I said, I'm not having – any leaks anyway it's kind of a test for this new bag mm -hmm. but you know but i have you know I, I get it i totally get it you know if you've got a bag and you're having issues with the bag liquid will get through it will find it will find a, a gap and you will have a leak right so so but but i tried it just because i said i would really and it, it just i just think it was just too thick it's not something that i would be using regular or ever again really i don't think but i think it was the diamond one i thought you had to sort of open the top of the sachet and then pour it in but no you don't hold the whole thing yeah in. i i thought that as well i thought that until, until i listened to one of the shows a few um, months back and i thought oh, don't say a word steve just listen and learn <laughs> yeah you just pop it in and push it up with a bit of tissue that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to push it up enough so that you don't fold over it when you're closing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Graham, how do you get on with it? Do you I, use gel in agents? I use a gel called Absorber Gel. It comes in a big container like that, and it's just really small sachet. Put one of them in my bag, and it, it does the job really good. It's, it's like a, a porridge consistency. Okay. And it just settles at the bottom and it works great for me. It just absorbs um, everything. It do you just, do that once a day or do you do that after you went empty? Every empty. I put one okay. in. Okay. So I, I go through about 10 a day. 
And I've got a container of 150 sachets I can get. So I get two boxes, two, two of these a month I get. Um, fantastic. But I've tried different ones. You can get the tablet ones. They look like tablets. But it says not for oral use. <laughs> just in <laughs> so case. Just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> And then someone so says, so your, you put it in your stoma and it says, no, it doesn't go in the stoma either. Mm. <laughs> is your consistency um, always the same, always very, very liquid? Yes. Yes. All the time. Okay. Is there a That's, reason for that, Graham? They just said it's your diet. Right, okay. But I have okay. a really plain diet. It's, yeah. That's the thing. See, I mean, my... How, how, sorry, sorry, Rachel, one second. One second, babe. Sorry. How? Uh, what would your What would your um, transition from from eating to coming out be? How long? It can go from one hour to twelve hours. Right. So okay. So okay. Inconsistent. It's it's like this morning. I emptied when I got up at seven o'clock this morning, and I didn't have to empty again until five o'clock tonight. Wow, it, there was just nothing in during the day. Yeah, and yet, previous days, no difference in your diet from not, any other not day at all. Previous <laughs> days, I've been emptying it seven o'clock in the morning, ten o'clock, twelve o'clock. It's just that is inconsistent, all, isn't it? inconsistent all the time. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Rachel. I'm sulking. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Um, I have a I have really liquid output and um. But I I choose not to use not to use them, and I don't know why. I've just never never thought to try them. I've had them with me. I mm. don't think I I think I cope with. So my transit is about after after quarter of an hour, twenty minutes of eating, it comes out my back straight away. And I spoke. I don't know if this is why I'm having the bad quite a lot of weight loss. I don't know if there's something not quite right. Why I got admitted with gastritis? Whether something's not being absorbed. But I tend to. 15 20 minutes what i've eaten just comes out the bag and i have a lot i'm probably emptying free to every one of steve's which when you're when you're with somebody that has an ostomy you realize how that it's a lot how, yeah how much it's yours is more and mine's just it's liquid it's like it's not so that you you can't be absorbing many nutrients at all no so i think maybe you should be up in your uh vitamins go are you on yeah. any supplements I, I take the um I've been taking sprays like multivitamin spray B um B twelve spray uh -huh. um a few other sprays and I've been doing a spray because the tablets I don't absorb but right. we are because I have I, on my notes it says I have short bowel syndrome so I don't know if this has got worse whether the weight loss is to do with that whether it's to do with the diversion colitis but my consultant wants to kind of have a better look because he, something isn't quite right because I haven't been. Something's not right because my my eating's gone downhill, and mm -hmm. I eat a lot, and mm -hmm. I, my appetite's gone. So we just have to to see. But um, I've got some quests. So some uh, Livia said that she uses trio pearls. Valerie Val also uses the pearls. Um, pearls seem to be quite popular, and Ash says that his output is liquid all the time. And so breakfast stay stay in me no joke twenty minutes. So it's probably like mine. Wow. Mine kind of it becomes liquid when I'm run down. Mm. It, you know what I mean. It's otherwise it's it's just like like it's porridge consistency and mm -hmm. and that's pretty much standard all the time. But when I don't feel right, well maybe I have a bug in that. That's when it becomes just you know like water. That, that happens to me if I've got a bug like I did a few weeks ago. Um, but this bug I had it was about a month ago. It only lasted twelve hours. Did it? But everything that I was eating, it was just going straight through like water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that, my radiator just clicked. Just clicked then. <laughs> but I, f I find that I'm sort of used to my my consistency. I've become used to it being very watery, and I just have to make sure I because I have the ostomy as well. I got to make sure that the I drink enough. I get enough electrolytes in my drinking. So mm -hmm. that's really important. I think it can be people drink more but don't realize the electrolytes. And also, I think regarding output, 
people don't realize that the ilium is really quite long it's a big segment because i That's i asked nice. a question once saying because i have an ileostomy and an ileoconduit i couldn't didn't realize that there was enough for both Mm -hmm. So and the ili the ilium I can't remember how many meters but I know it's it's long. The ilium's long, so is it, it depends where? where it depends where your ileostomy is on the ilium. I I guess maybe that's got a difference and how much you've had taken away that also changes whether you've got high output or low output. Well, I've learned something today. There's quite a lot, quite a lot of different factors. I wonder if Val knows or Richard knows how many how many meters the ilium or if somebody can Google it for me. So I wonder how many meters is the the, the small intestine because you know stretched out. I wonder if I someone can Google something. that because that'd be interesting as well. I, I want to say something like fifty. I don't think it is fifty meters. The bowel is probably what would you say a meter, if that. What the large bowel? Yeah, because it curls round, doesn't it? So Richard says something really interesting, actually. He doesn't use anything in the bag. Three but... and a half metres, sorry. How, how many? Three and a half metres. Is that well, the, the ilium. Small, small bowel? Yeah. Just had a quick look. Three okay. and a half metres, wow. Yeah, that's a lot. That is a lot. Oh, well, I said 50, so I'm way out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never been good at, good at numbers. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Richard said that he, he doesn't use anything in his bag, but he takes loperamide free loperamide four times a day when he gets a bug and it, uh -huh. it handy to have something now i'm not allowed to use loperamide because i had c diff in hospital so i'm i'm not allowed to use it so oh, i've just cool. accepted that that this is my output because if i use loperamide the c diff can come back now, what is loperamide now for those oh, it's a it's a basically um an anti what Stop! Stop diarrhea, Steve. Stop diarrhea. Yeah, it's like a emodium, emodium is the genetic. Well, what does it actually do to to your to your um your stomach in, as such to stop it? What would it actually do? It it slows everything okay. down. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Because I've been, I've been on it years, and I can remember when I had it when I had a colostomy, and I was on a really high dose, and they forgot about the stoma. And all of a sudden, everything stopped working. Right. And I got constipated. And that was the first time ever that had happened. And then when I went to the ileostomy, I said, oh, should I stop taking them? And then said, oh, no, take even more um, because it will not have much effect on it. And it hasn't. And I take 12 a day, regular. Yeah. And it, it barely touches us. Barely. I think I've used it once. But I kind of didn't really know what it was for. This is uh, sorry, go on, Steve. No, that was it. I didn't really know what it was for. I was kind of like the start of when I first had my stoma. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I like three, four times a day plus codeine to try and slow it down. Yeah, codeine is a. It's kind of cause, doesn't it? Cause constipation, codeine. It can, it can do. But it, it, my stoma nurse keeps saying it was. You, you cannot get constipated with an ileostomy. But I, I don't know. I'm I know old. I know Kelly's been having issues with um, a sluggish ileostomy, hasn't she? She's because I think when she went to a few of her her appointments, her um, hospital, that it was they said a constipated stoma. Mm -hmm. I'm I sure think, Kelly I think said. I'm sure she said something like that. <laughs> it's still a bowel, isn't it? Well, it's still an intestine, isn't it? Just the fact that it's coming out a different way, <laughs> I can't imagine that that would stop it from becoming constipated. Same as it wouldn't stop it from becoming loose. Mm. Ash said that Emodium stopped his output totally, and Richard has said it slows um, Loperamide. He takes it every day. Sorry, that was my mistake. And it slows the peristalsis. Right, okay. So the movement. Mm -hmm. which, make, which makes sense. Yeah, it does. Because my peristalsis doesn't work very well. Like in the large bowel, that's why I had my stoma. Mm -hmm. um, it's because the peristalsis just halted completely. But a trick so, I was told about the paramide, you know how it's in the capsule? Mm. I got told to open up the capsule and sprinkle it on your food. Really? Oh, that's mm -hmm. clever. And it works just as well that way. Because I really? tried the, the paramide melts. I don't know whether you've heard of the, the paramide melts. The little tablets. Mm -hmm. 
and those are good but they're just so expensive mm -hmm. wonder if there's any other sort of uh, more natural remedies I wonder if anyone could send in a, you know like people say about eating jelly babies and things like that because uh -huh. the because of the um marshmallows marshmallows was another one was mm -hmm. it yeah I got prescribed jelly babies once and I, I could have really? kissed my consultant. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd, uh, been, yeah. I'd been three months in hospital and I was in isolation and and uh, I was allowed to eat after I was on TPN and he put, he actually wrote that prescribed jelly babies, comes in with jelly babies and I just lit lit, lit up because it was the first thing <laughs> I've had food for three months. So I was really I happy. Try that in a sweet shop, just going with a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> I think he made... Like. I think he made it because he actually wrote it down and the next minute he bought it. So I don't know if he managed to, I don't know how he managed to do it, but he managed <laughs> to get me some. And he got me marshmallows the next day. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, spoiled. I've heard marshmallows are good. So, I've heard, yeah, I've heard the same. Richard says something, I got, Richard, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. I wish I could, I, I, I thought about asking you one, but I know you had the IPD hour, but Cy, Cylum Husk, is that how I say it? P S Y L U M. Silent, yeah. Silent. Yeah, so that's supposed to help. What's that? Yeah. Is that like a biscuit type thing? Is it kind of like like a Farley's Rusk, which sounds a bit <laughs> the same, doesn't it? It's got to be a herb. <laughs> yeah, it's a husk. Husk sounds husk. a bit uh, sounds a bit fibrous. It does, doesn't it? Mm. I find that peppermint tea is helpful. I know that it's not necessarily if you've got a high output, but mm -hmm. I find that peppermint tea helps it's me <laughs> bloating and pain after I eat. Um, so I, I, I swear by peppermint tea. I drink a lot of it, don't I? You do. I think it's more of a, personally, I think it's more of um, a, a placebo effect. Yeah, with you. You, you <laughs> kind of, you eat, yeah, and then, you, oh, it's got to be a peppermint tea straight away. It's like my dessert. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah, but you know what? If it keeps you happy, then then you know I what I mean. And coffee. No, no, you I drink it. So I it drink. Come, comes as a capsule from health food shops, but it's available in wafers too. Oh, Steve, you got that right. <laughs> yeah, I drink a lot of coffee as well, Graham. So when Rachel's I love there, coffee. When Rachel's there, I drink a lot of tea. I mean, a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, a lot. I refuse to make coffee. She makes a yeah. lot of tea. <laughs> I uh, coffee. You can't, can't coffee's oh. the bomb. It's it's alive and it wakes you up. It does. So have you got any tips for if you have a if you have a leak and you're out and about and if you've got any tips? <coughs> I'm just gonna run I need to go and empty, so I've all run to the toilet and have a right. bath. Oh, but I'll leave that for you too. <laughs> tips for tips. if you have a leak and you're out. Well, my tip would be not panic. Try not to panic. I know it's yeah. Weird. It would be hard. It's. I, I think this is more for your kind of uh, your your newbie hostelite, is. isn't it? Because I can't, I'll, I'll go out. I don't go out, and I don't take stuff with me now. Obviously, when I go to work, there's mm -hmm. there's a there's a bag of um, equipment in my bag. Mm -hmm. just in case um because with the previous bags i have had leaks uh -huh. I've, ha I've had to disappear to the to toilet and and change my t-shirt and you know and clean up and that but i think the more experienced you are the less likely you are to have a leak out and that, about that's right but I, th I think the most important is try not to panic definitely because i mean you like, panic, then you can assess the situation a lot quicker yeah. No, no, I take precautions now as well. For instance, you know, with the boxing training, yeah. I was box I was training between eight and nine on mm -hmm. a Monday and on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. and, and I knew that I'm going to get punched in the stomach. It's part of boxing. Yeah, I, I had I had the uh, the, the hernia um, shield, but mm -hmm. also I wouldn't eat like mm -hmm. four hours before I was boxing, so mm -hmm. so that my bag is going to be empty. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have to stop my training to go and disappear. It'd be not only would it be embarrassing, it'd be that's right. It'd be awkward. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like I'm, I'm there to train. I'm only there for an hour, so mm -hmm. I, I tended to uh, eat later on the night, which is not good for you. But 
Mm-hmm. But it meant that I could train and fight with an empty stomach, which is not good. You need food, it's some food in you. But but I didn't want any. I, the thought of being punched in the stomach and, and then just an explosion mm-hmm. is horrific. I can't even imagine how so, I so, deal with so, that. Sometimes if I don't eat for, say, four or five hours, it works even more. Really? Yeah. Wow. And mine's pretty good like that. It's kind of like um, it's very well behaved, and I'm not going to slag it off. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm praying that it stays like it's even after my op. You know, mm-hmm. even better. But we'll mm-hmm. see. Oh, we had a right laugh while you was gone, Rach. Well, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> laughing because Val just said that was quick, Rach. I know it was quick. <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez, is it my? You lost me. It's like two seconds. Done. <laughs> run, run back. <laughs> I think my urostomy, I, 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 I probably empty my urostomy every like two to every one of my ileostomy. So my urostomy is output is ridiculously. But I think that's like anybody when they drink, when they drink. Mm-hmm. But with I, I think regarding leaks and emergency kit, I've learned the really hard way, and I still make the mistake to take my my emergency kit with me. And I went to my interview on Tuesday for the Macmillan Advocacy. Um, cancer roll and I didn't, didn't take it with me and I started having a leak and I was like oh, oh. you know I'm in the middle of the interview going oh no oh no oh, I can feel it going but I think it's because I didn't I didn't stick it, it was my own fault I tried to use a barrier mm-hmm. barrier um and I think I put it on too thick and it was my own fault when I changed my bag so I think mm-hmm. I just didn't think but I tried to, I tried to take emergency bags with me but I'm a bit of a rebel and I think I like risking it sometimes I think yeah, I mean, like, well, I'm just saying to Graham, it's it's you know, the more experienced you are, the better you should become, Rachel. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and and the less likely you are to have leaks, but they do happen, and you might yeah. have an ill-fitting bag. And obviously, if you are having leaks, I'd say let's just say if you have one leak a month, then then you know you should be t- bringing stuff with you. You know, and right. obviously the first thing you know, br- barrier rings, flange extenders, yeah. <laughs> You had to say it. <laughs> they're, 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 they're a godsend. If you've got a leak, yeah, and you need to, it hasn't actually touched your clothing, but there's a channel, then a couple of them will get you through the day, will get That's you right. home, and it, you'll be it's safe. It's the worst. It does, yeah. But when you, have, when you have a prolapse, having a leak is more problematic. So when you have a prolapse, as Val knows, because Val also has a prolapse, when you have a leak for me it's like a nightmare because when I had had a leak at the train station and mine's about eight inches out and I need ice to help get it back in I need to lie down to get it back in so when I have a leak out and about for my ileostomy it's a nightmare it's uh, so I I use even though I I now use the concave and the with the barrier and I use Mm -hmm. um I use these as well just in case because it's not worth have risking having a leak but before when I first had my prolapse I had I'm not joking, like mum must say, I think I had leaks like three to four times a day. Every single night I had a leak. I was wow. living on my own. I, I was I was getting so many pyjamas and bedding and it wasn't until I found the Colorplast Mio came out. That was it. It changed my life because I leaks stopped mm-hmm. for, for both my uostomy <clears throat> and my ileostomy. And I found that they stopped and I wasn't having leaks as much. But I, prolapse is there's still... There's, because when you have a prolapse, it's it's out a lot. You know, depends depends how big your prolapse is. But when you lie down and you go to sleep, the stoma retracts back in. So your stoma is moving, changing shape all the time. So when you lie down and you're at night, the shape changes. Mine is actually at night. It's flush to the skin. So that's when the leaking can occur, which is why a ring helps. But when I stand up, it just goes bleh, and it just all comes out. So mm. having that change in shape can affect, can can cause leaks and I think that's important if you do have any that you go see your stone nurse they know you know what what's going on because if if you have got a start of a prolapse it's really important for them to know because then they talk about surgery and then it's your whole team knows because prolapses we don't talk about it that much but they can be problematic I've had a prolapse once that turned black and I had to have emergency surgery on because the the blood blood flow stops going to it and it's well it actually changed color it was like a, a dark purple but mm-hmm. having a prolapse, you do have to be careful. Having a hernia, you have to be careful of sh- if there's any strangulation. I think it's just being aware to keep that contact with your care team. 
Yeah, and, and paying and paying attention to what's happening to you as well. Val That's says right. she sat here nodding at everything I said about the prolapse. <laughs> well, we're hoping to start the group soon, so it'll be Val, me, and uh, hopefully Kat. Um, Bag of crap will be admin for it. So it is a hopefully a group for prolapse prolapse stomas. Mm -hmm. because I, they, with, I'm finding more and more people are getting prolapse. I don't know if that's because more there's more people having stomas. I don't know if that is because having a prolapse is when you first have it, it can be really can it can be really hard because it's it's when I first had it, it was horrible. It's what, it's what really, causes them? Right. So apparently that the stoma nurse we spoke to, Steve and I spoke to the Codoplast lady. Mm -hmm. Steve, do you remember? She, yes, I do. She, yeah. What? She, said, she said that some people Terry, don't have this. Yeah, Terry, some people don't have the same ingredient in their mucus as mm -hmm. other people. So that when, uh, not mucus, in the, sorry, in the membrane. So when the bowel's sticking together, it doesn't actually stick like most people. It falls out. Right. And that can be either down to any underlying conditions like mine, it, they think it's down to EDS. So it's EDOS, EDOS, Darlos syndrome or hypermobility. There's other reasons why there are prolapses. It's still very unknown. There's not many case studies on it. I've I've looked. There's a few, but there aren't many case studies as to why it happens, how to prevent prolapses. I think yeah. it's this ingredient that is missing. So for yeah. me, I've had eight refashions and they've all failed. And my I've I've got pig skin in me, I've got mesh, I've got he's dissected the muscle and tried to wrap it round. And how mine works is it telescopes out. So it just it just comes out. So if he kept cutting, as mm -hmm. he has cut quite a bit away, then it doesn't matter. It'll it still come out. Just food, come out. It? Yeah, so I think it's it can be difficult to... There are different types of prolapses because that's called an intersubstitution prolapse. And then there's prolapses that are that um, are different. So mm -hmm. I know ever, that that's the real them, side. Sorry, do you ever remember them like, like a rubber toy that used to be like almost like a sock within a sock? And you'd hold it, and it would, it would go through your hand. Was that the cup? You know, you know, that you used to have those cups that you go. No, it was it was almost like um like a tube. Yeah. And a tube within it, but it was made from rubber, and it was all yes. sealed. So it, it was it's like a ring, and and as you hold it, it would come yeah. through. It's like that. and that's yes. exactly the same thing with the prolapse, isn't it? Yeah. So it doesn't matter how much you chop away; it's still going to come gonna in come within on itself. It's almost like a like that, isn't it? Wow. Yes. You know, like infinity. <laughs> no, not like that at all. <laughs> it's when, difficult to explain, but I know what I'm on about. No, I, I, I know, I know what you're on about, and I, I know that when Steve first saw my prolapse, he was like, in a, he sat opposite me, and I was uh -huh. changing my stove, and he was in absolute shock, and and like not admiration, but you were interested, weren't you? Because it was yeah. Well, I suggested the film, it, didn't I? You did, yeah. You I was, I was amazed me. at that video. I had, I'd never seen anything like it. Really? Honest, wow. I was thinking, wow, can that really you just, happen? You don't know, do you? I was, I, I was shocked and I thought, you just you just wouldn't know. No. Nah. And, 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 and then when it came out, it's, what, it's just what the video would needed, really, because it's it kind of like you want to see it in its full glory to sort of understand right. this could happen to any single one of us and, you know, Rachel deals with it. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't know at all unless you watch it. That's you know, right. which is which is really commendable. And and for other people who've just been you know diagnosed with prolapse or whatever, you know, it's going to be like I don't know, amazing to sort of see how that yeah, you can just get on with it. This is this is your lot. You've That's tried right. refactions, that many of them, they haven't worked. You've kind of just accepted it. And I have to see. It. I haven't all like. When I first had a prolapse, it was really distressing, and I, and it affected my it affected my mind, it affected everything because it's painful. Prolapses are painful because it's like a stitch pain and it's a pulling pain and feels mm -hmm. like well, like your guts are falling out. It's that mm -hmm. kind of pain, like a washing like it feels like a washing machine pain. Mm -hmm. But you, I get I I realized that I had to accept the card I was dealt with because when I got when I was going through the roller coaster of surgeries, that was just extremely painful. I couldn't. That was really difficult because I was I was having surgery, then it was failing, and I was having it again, then it was failing. Like many people who have hernia repairs have a similar sort of, and it's a hard road to be on. And when he said, "I'm not doing it anymore," in a way, I'm kind of glad because it made it gave me the push to okay, let's accept it now. Yeah. I, I when I'm at home, I will I will lie down flat to help push it back in. If I'm out doing when we go to Copenhagen, we'll be out and about. It will be very big. 
-hmm. but I'll try and rest it where I can. And you just kind of adapt and work around it. But to start with, it's a process. It's a grieving process. I used to get stoma envy, you know, look at <sighs> other people's stomas and think, why does mine have to look like a willy, you know? So, so did you some days, can it stay in or not? Sorry? Some days, can it stay in or not? Or is it always out? <sighs> it it used to. It used to be a lot smaller and it used to go in on its own it, uh -huh. during the day when I lay down. But now the only time it is in is when I'm sleeping. When right. I wake up, it'll be in. I stand up and it'll just fall out. And it gets bigger throughout the day. And if I'm up on my feet, it will get bigger and bigger. So it feels, if I've got a bigger bag oh. on, it actually gets bigger. So it feels, so I think that's another reason probably why I empty my bag so much because it, mm. it's filled well, do you remember up. What, do you remember what Terry said? on that call that we had about how she deals with with people yes. with, with yeah do you remember yeah so she said about because i asked her about sugar because loads of people i think um eric from vegan ostomy has talked about sugar for prolapse stomas and it helps the swelling and it's brilliant it really does help it's it, it mm -hmm. swell down it is however when i tried it it got everywhere on my skin. And when I tried to put a black bag on, I couldn't do it. So I decided that ice was easier for me. But right. Terry said that to get a get a blue, like a blue sheet, cut mm -hmm. a hole around the stoma, poke the stoma through, and just put the ice so that no sugar goes on your peristomal skin. Right. So I'm gonna try that next time. I might do a video about wow. it. Yeah, and not only that, to, to actually put the sugar in a utensil that can be poured. You know, for mm -hmm. instance, you know, like for instance, um Remember when we was at school and you had to do the glitter mm -hmm. and they came in these little thin plastic tubes. That's they, right. were, they were perfect until the glitter went everywhere. But <laughs> you need it in something, something that can be, you know, directly put in an area. You don't mm -hmm. want a, like a pepper pot where it's just going to go everywhere. It's something that you that. can put that you can pour it actually, like pour it yeah, exactly. over. But if you've, if you've got that, so that might be easier. So that's something that, I'm going to try. I'm but just... I remember what she said, and sat, um, obviously she dealt with a lot as well. And and it kind of like um, after a while, you you figure the best way to do it for you, don't you? But just imagine that the best way that you do it for you, whatever it is, if someone shows you an even better way, so, and then, uh... and then you try it and you think, wow, yeah, you could say it could save you hours in the long run, couldn't it? Ash has just asked, what is a prolapse? Prolapse, so a prolapsed ash is when the stoma so the stoma is normally about that size and a prolapsed stoma is when the stoma comes out like it can be four inches it can be three inches but it's quite long minus eight nine inches and i've done if you go on rocking two stomas there's a youtube video um per, uh, prolapse ileostomy bag change and i show mine is unusually big but that's just a complication it is it is still quite rare but it's more common if you have hernias. That's why it's important to not lift things when you've had surgery and to actually listen to instructions because I didn't. And I don't. And who knows, that could be what initially started mine because I was too stubborn and pig-headed to listen to instructions on lifting. Mm. You know, right after surgery because I, I, I didn't listen because I lived on my own and I thought I knew better. So I yeah, don't know. I, I did listen. Did you? And I wore, yeah, and I wore all the protective equipment i wore all I, I had that many vanilla blush vests and pants you yeah. know i did everything that i should i, I had um black beckford um body wrap for when i was lifting weights you know uh -huh. heavy weights I, I did everything that i could and and literally um i sneezed and i felt it rip yeah. when i wasn't wearing stuff when i was at work with just a regular vest a regular vanilla blush vest i sneezed i felt it rip I drove over a pothole. I felt it rip again, and that was that was kind of it. Wow. So, all said and done, you know, you can you can take as much precaution as you want. I think mm -hmm. I think you, if you if you um, it's a bit of fate, isn't it? It's yeah. gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I think. But I think with the prolapse, and I I think that there is more. There's almost there's not more prevention, but I think there's there's care needs to be. Oh yeah, definitely. I think if you've got a hernia, there needs to be an awareness that it can mm -hmm. prolapse. Because when I went swimming once, and I think that was when I did a lot of damage. That one time I made it, I did a lot of swimming, and I got out and it had come out. And I've got a hernia as well, so I, I think my hernia came before the prolapse, possibly. Mm -hmm. Your your swimming is is um you know it's very energetic swimming. You don't just you know paddle, do you? Let's no, face I, it. 
I love swimming. But, but, you, but you look at look at people like Zoe Wright. Mm. You know, now she works works out proper hard works out, doesn't she? She and does. Yet, with weights. Yeah, and you and you and and I've seen a train without equipment on. Mm. You know, I think it's just a lot of it is it's down to you and the way that your body reacts to certain things. Because mm -hmm. I asked my stone this, this question just last month. It's, I'm coming up to 41 years in total with my stoma. And I says to her, am I still at risk of having the hernia? And she says, probably not because my muscles are just so tuned in now that I've had it for so long that the chances of it's coughing will not give you a hernia. And do you, do you wear any... Any nothing, garments? To, not, nothing, no? nothing. Nothing at all. Never have done. Okay. I've had it since I was a child, and I just grew up with it. Had nothing, nothing special. How How old was you know when you when you first had your stoma? First one, I was only one hour old. I had wow. that for two years. Then it was reversed, and then I had it back when I was age seven, and I've had it ever since. So I I don't know any difference. Yeah, of course. Really. Um, wow, it's like a long say, time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But we we used nothing special at all. No, no. no. All these years and no hernias, nothing. Wow. Mad, isn't it? I, it is. I've got a few. I've got a few um, questions. So I'm quite oh. quite jealous, you know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I haven't got my computer on. Well, <laughs> I, ne I never have if, questions. Yeah, but Steve, it'd be good if you could help me with it because I'm trying to do it all at the moment and my poor head's like, can't go, can't My go. computer is like, I don't know, Fred Flintstone owned <laughs> it before me. Okay, so let me let me carry on button in. Right. So Ash has said, I wasn't told about hernia till I got um, one. It's only small. Val said, my surgeon said, if you're going to get them, you will. Hernia, I behaved and I have had two massive hernias. So, yeah, I, I agree. That's what Steve said, the same. Gemma said, I'm going to be asking tomorrow, why wasn't I told I'm more at risk because of my hypermobility? Gemma, don't panic because it is still rare to get a prolapse. I think they don't want to scare you when you first have your stoma. So it's not that they're hiding it. It's they don't, if they told you all of it, I think it would be too much. But if you want to message me afterwards, like we talk anyway, but if you want to message me afterwards, you, you can. Um, yeah, so I, I can speak to you afterwards. And we have like about about two or three minutes left. So that's gone quick, hasn't it? That it has. has. That's it's gone, gone very quick. That's gone. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Graham, for joining us. It's I'm really glad. Anytime. You came on. Anytime. Yeah. Cheers, Graham. So I'm just trying to think what else to mention now. Hmm. Well, Jervis just put mine looks like a Willy Raspberry, so we have to <laughs> lower the tone at some point in the because <laughs> Louise isn't here. So let's lower the tone. <laughs> mine looks like an actual knob so and it moves <laughs> as well and it's eight inches wow <laughs> <laughs> i'm not saying nothing it's the best way it is <laughs> oh dear sorry mum if you're watching <laughs> hi jill oh no Jill. i'm hoping she's she's busy <laughs> she'll catch up she'll catch Hello, up Rachel's mom. <laughs> So I've so I've got um busy day tomorrow getting the train, but hopefully I'll get to see Steve because I've not seen him for a while. So How long does it take? Three and a half hours. Oh, we had to pick know. like we we couldn't be just an hour away. We had to go take the hard route. I think Steve and I take the hard route in nearly everything. Well, I know I do. Yeah, it's uh, the good things in life though are worth the wait. It's worth it. It is. Of course, yeah. Yeah. How long is the drive down, Steve? The drive down, I, I, I can do it in about two hours and 50 minutes. Uh-huh. That's not too bad. No. Nah. And lots of, but, but I can do it in about three and a half hours with like four coffee stops. That's on the way back. <laughs> Bit of a wake, a wake up. <laughs> but uh, obviously, obviously, Rachel, you know, if um, if anything changes tonight, let me know and I'll be down. After work. Yeah, but it's no point you coming down for us to go back up. I may as well just get the train and come up. So it right. makes sense. And it'll save me from Peterborough. It's five hours. So it makes sense to go from Birmingham because it'd be less hours. Okay. Right. We'll talk about this afterwards then. Not live. Yeah. You asked the question. <laughs> <I did. laughs> 
Thank you. I blame you. Well, thank you for watching. I have no idea what we're covering next week. Graham, do you know? I haven't a clue either. You pay attention more than me, I think. I have no idea what we're, what we're covering next week. So um, I'm sure Louise will put it all up um, next week when she does the show. So we're, I'll try and see if we can do that in a few days. Um, it'll, it'll be to do with stoma accessory and necessity. So it'll be another, another product, but I'm not sure exactly what. Um, so if, if anybody got any questions, want to quickly ask us anything before we go, we've got, it's nine, but we can answer any questions. If you've got any burning desires or within reason, please, <laughs> any questions. And if not, we will say good night. Just seeing if Richard says, cheers guys. Ash said, Peterborough is great. I live near there. And Gemma said, I'm glad I made you all chuckle before bed. <laughs> right so we'll say good night then take care good night we'll everybody soon. good night everybody hopefully, hopefully louise and, and the others will be back next week so night night guys no night see you later bye. take care bye now i have to press stop broadcast